Hey guys, so today um, we are going to have a little lesson over simplifying equations. So what we are doing is we are getting ready for a new chapter. And this chapter is all about applying equations and applying inequalities. But before we can do that, I want us to go ahead and review a little about simplifying equations because that is, is going to be what helps us whenever we have to apply those equations and inequalities. So the first thing I want to talk about is combining like terms. Combining like terms. So when we learned about this, I told y'all to think about apples to apples. Two apples plus two apples is four apples, just like 2x plus 2x is equal to 4x, correct? All right. Now, however, when we are talking about equations and expressions, what we need to look for is we need to look for like terms. So the question come is, comes up, what is a like term again? I know we learned it. What is a like term? Okay, remember it has to have the same variables and the same exponents on those variables, okay? And they're separated with addition and subtraction, since subtraction is technically addition. All right, awesome. So now that we kind of remembered what a like term is, let's get some examples. Let's say I want us, let's do example one. And in example one, we have the question, simplify 5y plus 2 minus 6y plus 14. So notice the word simplify. It doesn't say solve, it just says to simplify. So all we have to do is combine like terms until we can't combine anymore, okay? So remember the property, the commutative property says that addition can be rewritten in any order. So this 5y plus 2 minus 6y plus 14, we can switch the minus 6y and the plus 2, so that way we have 5y minus 6y plus 2 plus 14. Well, now we have five apples minus six apples where we're minus an apple, right? We're short an apple, negative one, negative y, and then two plus 14 gives us 16. So this is a simplified version of that expression. All right, let's look at a, ne a next example. So example two. And that wants us to solve 8x minus 4x plus 6 is equal to negative 86, okay? So before we solve, we want to simplify. And by simplify, combine any like terms. And we combine like terms, they need to be on the same side of the equation. So we're looking at this side of the equation, and we're looking on that side of the equation. So if we're looking here, the only like terms that I see is 8x and negative 4x. So 8x plus negative 4x, well that gives us 4x. Okay, and then the plus 6 comes down. Now when we look on this side of the equation, we get negative 86, but there's no other terms. The only term is negative 86. So that can just stay and come down. All right, so our next step is to solve for x. We have a two-step equation, which means we take care of addition and subtraction first. I'm gonna take care of that plus six by doing the inverse operation and subtracting six from both sides. That leaves me with four x is equal to negative 86 minus six. They are both negative, which means I'm going to add them together. Six and six is 12, nine, and then of course negative and more negative is more negative, right? So it gets negative 92. Last and final step to solve for x is to get rid of the multiplication and division. We're be currently being multiplied, so the inverse of that would be divide, divide. So x is equal to whatever negative 92 
divided by 4 is. So I have a positive and a negative, which means a neg that it's going to be negative. So remember, multiplication and division, two negatives make a positive, right? And multiplication and division only, two negatives make a positive. So the negative is going to be part of my answer. 4 goes into 9 twice. Bring down the 2. 4 goes into 12 three times. Remainder 0. So our answer is negative 23. All right. So now that we've gone over combining like terms, and we can see how combining like terms made this problem, which was long, into just a simple two-step problem, which is what we like. OK? Um, sometimes, before we can combine like terms, we have these little things called parentheses. And remember, I've always said, to take care of the parentheses, use the distributive property. So let's talk about using the distributive property to simplify. All right, so we're now going to talk about the distributive property and how that helps us simplify equations. All right, so the distributive property says this. If you have A, parentheses, B plus C, that A is being distributed through multiplication over addition. So it's A times B plus A times C. So A times B plus A times C. It's being distributed to every term on the inside. All right, so now that we've reviewed the property, let's see it in action on how it can help us simplify equations. So let's say we're going to go on to another example. So this is example number three. We want to solve 7, parentheses, x plus 3, plus 5x equals 69. Now, you might be tempted to go ahead and just add x and 5x, or even 7x and 5x. You cannot do that. The first thing you have to do is simplify by taking care of the parentheses. To eliminate the parentheses, we're going to use the distributive property. So we're going to distribute the 7 by multiplication over addition. So we get 7x plus 7 times 3 is 21. And then we have our plus 5x equals 69. Now we can combine like terms. So remember, comparing apples to apples, looking on the left side of the equation, the only two like terms are 7x and 5x. So 7x plus 5x gives us 12x plus 21 is 69. Now we have a two-step equation. So we went from this complicated equation to this two-step equation. So now we can solve how we want to. So we take care of addition and subtraction first. So we take care of the plus 21 by doing the inverse operation of subtraction. Um, 69 minus 21 is 48, okay? And then we take care of multiplication and division next. So we're going to take care of that multiplication by doing the inverse operation of division, right? So 48 divided by 12 is 4, and there is our answer. Awesome. All right, so... Let's talk about when this distributive property gets complicated because it does like to do that. I'm going to show you an example where um, you're distributing, but you're actually going to have to distribute a negative. It's just a little different. So let's look at example four. Okay, and example four says solve 20 minus 9 times y plus 4 equals 2, OK? So remember, subtraction is just adding the opposite, or the opposite of it, adding the opposite, right? So this is really saying 20 plus negative 9 times y plus 4 equals 2. So when we use the distributed property to get rid of this parentheses, we're not just distributing a 9, but we're distributing a negative 9 because of that subtraction, right? So now we have 20 plus negative 9y and the negative 9 
times 4 is negative 36 and then equals 2, okay? So at this point, we can go ahead and drop these parentheses, right? So it'd be 20 minus 9y minus 36 equals 2. All right, now we're going to solve for y, but first we want to simplify, right? I see some terms that are alike. So 20, and it's not 20 and 36, it's 20 minus 36, right? So 20 minus 36, different signs, which means we're going to subtract. 36 minus 20 is 16. However, the negative is a bigger number, so it is negative. And then we still have our minus 9y is equal to 2. All right, now we take care of the addition and subtraction first. Okay, so this is our variable, right? Our variable is being multiplied by negative 9, and then we have a m added to a negative 16, right? So to get rid of that minus 16 or negative 16, we're going to put a plus 16 on both sides. So we end up with negative 9y is equal to 18. Now to solve for y, we're going to take care of that times negative 9 by dividing by negative 9, the inverse operation. And y ends up being 18 divided by negative 9, positive and negative. When you are multiplying or dividing, two negatives make a positive. However, we have a positive and a negative, which means our answer is negative. 18 divided by 9 is 2. Awesome. All right, let's do another one of those because I know that that looks a little complicated, okay? So let's simplify an expression. We're not even going to solve. We're just going to look at simplifying an expression. So example five. I want us to simplify 18x minus 4x minus 9. Okay, so again, to get rid of that parentheses, we want to distribute, right? Oh, what are we distributing? I don't really see a number there. Remember, there's always an imaginary 1 times anything. So we're distributing a negative 1. So we have 18x. Negative 1 times 4x is negative 4x. Negative 1 times negative 9 is positive 9, since two negatives make a positive. All right, we can combine like terms. 18x minus 4x gives us 14x, and then plus 9. All right, so let's do another example like that where we just have a negative and we're distributing a negative 1, but I want us to do one where we're solving. So let's get... Another example, example six, and this one says nine minus x plus eight is equal to 20, right? So think of it like this. You are distributing a negative. You're distributing a negative or timesing by negative one. So nine negative times x is negative x. Negative times 8 is negative 8 or minus 8. Awesome. Okay, now that we've done that, we can combine some like terms. 9 minus 8 is 1, so we have 1 minus x equals 20. We're going to solve for x. So the first thing we have to get rid of is that number that's being subtracted or added to x. And this is just 1 minus x. So this is a plus 1, positive 1, which means we're going to subtract 1 from both sides, leaving us with negative x. So that negative is going with the x. That negative has nothing to do with that 1. The negative is still stuck to that x. So negative x is equal to 19. And now, to get rid of that negative, remember we said that it's really an invisible negative 1, right? So we're going to divide both sides by negative 1, leaving us just x is equal to 19 divided by negative 1 is negative 19. All right, I have one more example that I want to walk through, 
and then we will be done. So this is example six. I'm sorry, we just did example, this is example seven, right? Can I get ahead? No, example seven, all right. So example seven says solve 5x plus 3x plus 4 equals 40, okay? So again, distribution, distribu distribution property, get rid of the parentheses, and we're distributing a positive one this time. So we've got 5x, 1 times 3x is 3x, 1 times 4 is 4. Combine some like terms, so this is 8x plus 4 is equal to 40. We have a two-step problem, so we take care of the addition and subtraction first. So we're going to subtract four from both sides. So 8x is equal to 36. And then we divide by eight. So x is equal to 36 divided by eight. And you might think, well, 8 does not go into 36 evenly, so you could, if you wanted to, get a decimal answer. So you could do 8 into 36, and you can know it goes 4 times, so it's 32. And you're going to have to annex a 0, and then 8 goes into 45 times, right? So 36 over 8 is equal to 4.5, or you could just reduce 36 over 8, and that's what I would do. I know that I could divide both of them by 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9, and 8 divided by 4 is 2, so it's 9 over 2. And 9 over 2 is the same as 4.5, so it should all... any Either of these two answers is correct. This right here would not be correct, okay? You have to reduce or give me the decimal. All right, that's all I have to say um, about simplifying equations. I hope that this refreshed your memory and covered some things that you might have been struggling on. I will see you in class where we do some practice problems. Until then, uh, on top of doing your notes for this le lesson, I want you to go to page 315. Okay, this is 8.1, section 8.1 in your book. And I want you to do two through six evens. Okay, they are due in class with your notes. They're due in class with your notes. If you can't do two, four, and six and you're struggling, then you need to contact me and I'll help you through it. All right, I hope you'll have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you.